Okay, so, folks, so um, what I want to do is I want to talk about the uh, multi-bisection method, which I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work or not, but oh, I, have, uh, I have a couple ideas. Anyway, so what I want to do is I just want to refresh everybody's memory with the single bisection method. So here's our function x squared minus 5, and uh, here it is. And basically, we're trying to find where it crosses the z-axis. And we have two solutions in this case. So I'm actually just going to bound the problem to uh, 0 and 3. And so 0 is going to be my first initial guess, and 3 is going to be my, uh, my upper initial guess. And basically, what you need to do with the bisection method is you need to have an initial guess where the function is negative and an initial guess where the function is positive. And then what you essentially do is you draw a line through it, and then um, you cut it in half, and whichever one is, is positive or negative, you take that value and you essentially shrink until you get to the uh, solution here, which is, looks like it's going to be like uh, whatever square root of 5 is, uh, 2.23. 2 okay? Now the issue is, is that if I expand this, so let me, um, let me make uh, x plot this guy and then y plot 0, 0. This. And then I'm actually going to make uh, z plot, oop, z plot, x plot, y plot, and then I got to do a, uh, and actually what I got to do is I got I to do a mesh grid, don't I? I got to do uh, x, x, y, y, mesh grid, x plot, y plot, um, and then instead of giving it x plot and y plot, give it x, x, y, y. That's going to be zz, and then instead of plotting it, I'm going to do a mesh xxyyzz. Okay, so then z is going to be my function, so we have comma y, not dot y, comma, and then I'm going to have, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do something simple, minus 5, like this, go. Um, it doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? Oh, because it's not, the, it's not defined. Okay, so there's my mesh right there. So basically what you see here is, is sort of what I talked about in my newton Rapson video, is that this um, scalar function has a uh, arc. And it's because it's quadratic. That's really the issue. Um, but even if it was like a plane, you essentially just have like a multitude of solutions here. And so bisection method is going to have the, uh, uh, the same issue. Um, but let's just, let's just go through the motions just to see what we do. So what I'm going to do is I, instead of in, in, my, in my first bisection method video, what I had was x upper and x lower. And so instead of what I'm going to have is I, I need like a point p upper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make p upper, in this case, I'm going to make it, uh, it needs to be where the function is positive. So I'm going to make that 3, 3. So I'm going to make it a 3, 3. Okay, and then p lower is going to be 0, 0. And so what we're going to do is, I'm going to say while, and then I'm going to say, what I need to do is compute my step size, and that's really going to be the distance between the two. So that's going to be norm of PU minus PL. Ah. And I'm going to get rid of this while loop, I'm going to hit F5 just to make sure. So yeah, so the distance between my first guess and my last guess is 4.24. So that's like my step size. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say while step size is greater than, I don't know, 0 0.1. Let's just make it small just to be easy. And I'm going to throw an end down here. And just like the bisection method, what I need to do is I need to make my step size equal to my step size over 2. That way, it old, that way I essentially break out and I don't hit an infinite loop. So if I get rid of the semicolon here, you can kind of see how my step size um, shrinks down. Okay? So what you need to do is wait, if you have P upper, you need to evaluate z upper, which is going to be essentially the function at pu of 1 and then pu of 2. And I, I should probably, just to make it simpler, make the function down there and define differently, but it, it's fine. So then z lower is going to be f of p lower of 1 comma p lower of 1, like this. Okay? And so now you can, you can go through and you can shrink your... Um, you can evaluate halfway halfway through. Um, so what you need is you, you have a step size here, but you also, in, in the bisection method, everything was linear, so you just moved left to right. So is this positive or negative? But what you actually need is you need a direction vector now. And your direction vector is going to be p upper minus p lower, but then you have to divide 
by the norm of the, st of, the uh, of PU minus PL. That way you get a unit vector. So this is a unit vector in the direction that you are going. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, throw a hold on here. Hold on. And I'm going to plot um, my, my function. So I'm going to say uh, plot 3 PU of 1 PU of 2. That's the Y coordinate. And the Z coordinate is just going to be Z upper. And I'm going to draw a blue star. And I'm going to do uh, marker size is 10. Okay. And I'm also going to do plot 3 P lower of 1, P lower of 2, Z lower, and then a red star with a marker size of 10. Okay. And then finally, I'm going to connect the dots. So I'm going to say plot 3, and I'm going to say uh, P, let's see, P, P, U of 1, P lower of 1, that's going to be my, the x coordinates, then P, U of 2, P, L of 2, and then Z, U, and Z, L, and I'm going to draw a green line, and I'm going to make the line with the three. Okay, so there we go. So there is my essentially my first bisection, right? So I've connected these two dots, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute the point halfway in between. Okay, so this is I'm going to comment this. I'm going to say uh, plot the current bisection. Okay, and then I need to compute the point halfway way down. And so, because this is bisection in multi dimensions, I have to say P B for um, yeah P B for P bisection is going to be, and I can pick either one. I'm going to say P lower plus the direction vector times, and actually I need to do this after I half the step size. So let's uh, let's say uh, have the step size. Otherwise, we're just going to go all the way. Times the direction vector times step size. Okay? And then I'm going to copy this line of code. And I'm going to plot this with a, um, let's say, let's see, a, a black star. And I'm going to call this uh, P, B, P, B. And then here, I'm going to comment this. This is going to be compute the bisection point. Then we're going to evaluate the function at the bisection point. So then P, B, P, uh, ZB is going to be F of PB of 1, PB of 2. And then that way I can do ZB. I'm going to hit F5 here. And it doesn't like it because wrong type. Oh boy. Um, errors in Octave are horrible. At line 34, it's this plot command. Um, do you see the error? You can probably skip ahead. I'm just going to pause it because I can't figure it out. Okay, folks, I have no idea why it, uh, it, it worked. Um, but because I don't have a, like an if statement to, ch to, to pick a different line to reset the P lower or P upper, um, it basically, the first time it grabbed this point, and then it just halved it again, and it kept having it over and over and over again. So what we need to do is, once we compute this midpoint, which is, is halfway between these, we need to determine if this point is P upper or P lower. And so what we need to do is we need to say, okay, determine which point to reset. And so what we need to do is we need to say, Okay, um, if ZB is greater than zero, that means that P upper becomes PB. And then, oh, by the way, we need to negate our direction vector so that we march in the other direction. Else, we need to reset lower, go 
from there. And if we did this right, we should see, I hope. No. Oof, this looks pretty awful. Okay, what the heck did I do? Hmm. If ZB is greater than zero, if it's not, P lower is the, is the new PB. When you come back here, and you plot P upper, which should have just been the same point. Do we have to run this in debug mode? What the heck is going on? I think we gotta run this in debug mode. Okay, so let's run this. So we'll step, step, step. Step size is halved. PB is 1.5, 1.5, which is which is here. ZB should be negative, right? VB is negative, okay, cool. Alright, and then I'm going to plot that point, so I'm going to get a black dot there, and then if ZB is positive, which it's not, P lower becomes the new PB. Okay, so now P lower should be 1.5, 1.5, and P upper should just be the same. Okay. So now if I plot P upper again, I just get the same point, P lower, ah, I forgot to recompute, by the way, V lower is now ZB, okay, let's see if that worked. Okay, in this case, we also have to do Z upper is now ZB, here you go, and then find that. Okay, so, did it work? I don't know, I guess, I guess, what's, what's our PB? 0 0.79? That's our PB at the end, what's the answer? Ooh, I guess we need to determine what ZB is, we need to output ZB so we can actually see if we're getting closer and closer to 0. Are we getting closer and closer to 0? No, I'm at minus 8. Am I getting closer and closer to 0? I don't know, if we, uh... If we have this step size, yeah, let's just do that. Okay, I'm going to pause this and see what's going on. Okay, I figured it out. For some reason, I, I don't know why I said this, but you don't actually need to um, change the direction. Um, because of this function here, because you're always starting from PL, basically the direction vector is always pointing this way. And so what you're doing is you're basically bringing in both endpoints until you arrive at the location. So I have the step size set to 0 0.001, and so here's my final solution. Now, the reason, remember when I was talking about multiple solutions, like we easily could have made our initial condition like 2, t like two, two 3, and gone this way. And if you notice, our value of ZB after all this like iteration is still pretty good, but our solution's completely different because we just found different solutions. But the point is, is that this works for... Um, any value of um, any dimension. I mean, this is two-dimensional, but you can easily extrapolate this to three dimensions. Um, anyway, hope that helps.